Hi, on this video we're gonna go over storage if you haven't gone over the menus of camera, smart analysis, file management, playback and live view, please go back to the previous video parts. We have part 1, part 2 and this will be part 3 covering storage. This is for the new ENS, MBRs and DVRs interface. So now let's begin. Under the menu on the top when you click this triangle then you go under storage. Under storage, the first menu that comes up is recording schedule. In here, you can record each camera individually to the schedule that you want. For example, I will select camera one. In camera one, right now, there's nothing under the graph, so it means it's not recording. If I want this camera to record 24 hours a day, Monday through Friday on motion, I simply select motion with my mouse and then I will click and highlight all the area. You can also change it to some hours to be continuous or for example motion and alarm or for example motion and sensor and alarm or point of sale or you can choose the camera to not record anything. If you have a schedule for one camera, you want to copy it to more cameras, simply select copy and select the other cameras and then click OK. If not, just click apply and now this is your schedule for this camera only. Now let's go over to capture schedule. Capture schedule is the same as recording schedule but this is when the camera takes snapshots. So I'll simply select the camera and then I will select motion 24 7 for this camera only or if i want to copy it to many other cameras then it will be triggered depending on the schedule in this case it's 24 7. now let's go to storage device under storage device here it will show you the list of hard drives that you have on this example i only have one I can select the hard drive and I can initialize it. Initialize it means it will erase everything on the hard drive. If the hard drive is acting a little bit weird or you have damaged files, you can also select the hard drive and repair the database. This will take a long time, but if you have a hard drive that's having difficulty storing the files, I would recommend you replacing the hard drive instead of repairing the database then on the top right hand side, it shows you the space of the hard drive and the free space that you have on the hard drive. Now let's go on the storage mode. On the storage mode, you have quota and group. If you select quota, you can select each camera to have a quota of recording per hard drive. Quota means if you put 10 gigabytes in here, that means the camera will only record 10 gigabytes of space in the hard drive and then it will be overwritten every time there's new files. It will not continue on the whole space of the hard drive. Keep in mind, you cannot exceed the maximum space of the quota space right here. This is the maximum gigabytes free that you have on the hard drive. Now let's go over to group. If you click on group, Right here, you have the selection for hard drives. If you have more than one, it will show you hard drive one and two. And then you can select how many cameras will record to hard drive one and how many cameras will record to hard drive two. In this example, I have all cameras recording to hard drive one. Now let's go over advanced. Under advanced, you have override. This option, I would recommend you to have override if not, once the hard drive gets full, it will not override the files. You can also enable hard drive sleeping. This happens if there's no motion at all in the system for at least 30 minutes. Now let's go over the event. Under event, these are the settings for the camera. You have your camera number, and then if you enable motion detection, you select enable, and the area for motion. You can clear it out and select specific areas for motion detection. If you're happy with that, just click apply. Also, if the camera detects motion, you can tell it when to be activated, which is 24 seven. 
and then linkage action means whenever there's motion you could tell the camera to do one of the following actions like send an email, notify surveillance center, audible warning or full screen monitoring. Now let's go over video tampering. You can enable video tampering and the camera will recognize when someone tampers with the video meaning if someone puts their hand in front of the camera it will be triggered. If someone puts their hand just like I just did depending on the linkage action that's what the DVR would do or send the alarm. Now let's go to video loss. If you enable video loss that means when there's no video the camera will send an alarm based on the linkage action and you can select any cameras from the list. Now let's go to alarm input. On the alarm input you can select up to four alarms on this MBR for example. You can choose the alarm type for example this one is normally open that means two prongs are open so when there's an alarm happening the system will close the prongs so if you have a speaker or an alarm system that uses normally open for the trigger you will select normally open now let's go to alarm output on the alarm output if you connected an alarm system to the back of the MBR these are the settings that the alarm will be triggered for example you can have it the alarm to be active continuously 24 7 and if something happens during any hour it will trigger the alarm based on the alarm settings. Now let's go to exception. Under exception these are the alarms that the MBR system will tell you based on these options. If you have any of these options you can also tell it to do the audible warning or trigger the alarm output. Now let's go under smart event. Under smart events, here are your intelligent video content analysis. For example, you have face detection, vehicle detection, human body, blind crossing. If the camera supported any of these features, it will let you enable it. For example, this camera supports vehicle. So this camera is most best used if you have the camera pointing at a parking lot where cars do not supposed to exit or enter. If you enable it, it will detect the vehicle when it's going through those lines. Once a vehicle goes through those lines, depending on the arming schedule, you can link it to any other alarms. You can also allow cars to a blacklist and a whitelist. So depending which cars are allowed in which areas, you can select the alarm that is best fitted for the whitelist or the blacklist. On the picture, this is how the MBR will take a snapshot and depending on the settings that you choose is how the picture will be saved when you go into the playback for vehicles. Under counter overlay, you can enable camera name, camera model or number and camera info. Under blacklist and whitelist, here's where you can import the number of the car, the license plate of, of the car and the type of vehicle. Once you import it, then the system will know that you have a blacklist, whitelist or others. And this concludes the walkthrough video of storage. Stay tuned for more videos. Don't forget to click the like, share and subscribe.